The subterranean cuttings below the Great Pyramid were built to be an efficient and powerful water pumping system. But before discussing the construction pump's operation, we will examine more closely some important components and features of the subterranean cuttings. The interior passages and subterranean chamber were built before the Great Pyramid was assembled. These cuttings were excavated in the solid bedrock as intended without any change of plans during the construction. The builders knew what they were doing. The images and animations in this video series have been created to be as simple as possible. The reason for this is to present the information in a concise and clear manner. The information contained in these videos is very basic, but my second book is about how the Great Pyramid operated as a water pump. This book goes into much greater detail concerning virtually every aspect of how and why the Great Pyramid pumped water. The water pumped by the subterranean water pump was used to move the stones on barges through a series of water locks and to their final location with ease. In the subterranean chamber, there is a pit in the floor. This pit terminates into solid bedrock and is not a drain. There is also a horizontal passage leading from the subterranean chamber. This passage also terminates into solid bedrock and is not a drain. In the subterranean cuttings, water moves down the descending passage into the subterranean chamber. Then water flows from the subterranean chamber up through the grotto and then up and out of the water pump. The first component we will examine is the door on pivots. Sabro wrote about this door as late as the first century. Although there is scholarly debate as to the original location and configuration of this door on pivots, we contend it was located in the area of the upper portion of the descending passage. This door on pivots can be better described as the movable component of a check valve. The door was like the flapper of a large check valve. The flapper pivoted inwards. This one-way valve allowed water to enter into and down the descending passage, but not move back up the descending passage. The door on pivots was built to be a check valve. This valve would open, allowing water to move down the descending passage. When this valve was closed, water could not move back up through the check valve. There is also a small chamber called the grotto, which is located in the mound the Great Pyramid was built over. The purpose of this small chamber is to house another check valve. This check valve allowed water to move up through the grotto when it automatically opened at the proper time. A unique feature of this valve was that the flapper had a hole in it. This seemed counterintuitive for a check valve to have a hole in the flapper, but the geniuses who built the Great Pyramid knew what they were doing. The grotto's location was in the mound the Great Pyramid was built over. The grotto housed a check valve the flapper of this check valve had a hole in it. Water moving up through this chamber would open this valve. When this valve was closed, it would inhibit the flow of water down through the grotto. Water moved from the subterranean chamber up through the grotto and up through the mound and out of the construction pump. Deep below the Great Pyramid, between the bottom end of the descending passage and the subterranean chamber, is a small cutting called the Lesser Subterranean Chamber. This small chamber seems to be without purpose, and few talk about it, but this cutting served an important function in the operation of the construction pump. 
When water flowed past this small chamber, it would introduce turbulence into the movement of water, which caused water to move in a whirlpool in this chamber. The lesser subterranean chamber would also cause water to move in a vortex as it traveled into the subterranean chamber. The lesser subterranean chamber is located between the bottom of the descending passage and the subterranean chamber. The lesser subterranean chamber caused water to move in a whirlpool, and it also caused water to move in a vortex as the water moved into the subterranean chamber. Before we see how the construction pump operated, we will take a closer look at the subterranean chamber. This chamber has a number of highly unusual features that have puzzled many researchers, but when considering these features with the purpose of pumping water, the subterranean chamber is very sophisticated in its design. There is a pit in the floor of this chamber that seems to have no purpose. Another unusual feature of the subterranean cuttings are the mounds of solid bedrock left inside the western end of the subterranean chamber. The hole in the floor of these oddly shaped mounds give the appearance to some researchers and authors that this chamber was unfinished or that there was a mid-construction change of plans. Nothing could be farther from the truth. I think that the builders knew what they were doing when they left these mounds in place. I think that these oddly shaped humps were left in place intentionally and had a functional purpose. That purpose was very important for the operation of the construction pump. The subterranean chamber is notable for the irregular mounds in the western end. These mounds act as a water break and slow water movement in the western end of this chamber. This causes water to move in a powerful vortex in the area of the pit. There are two valves in the construction pump. One check valve is in the descending passage. The other check valve is in the grotto. The use of check valves and the descending passage leading down to a watertight subterranean chamber are the only similarities between the construction pump and a hydraulic ram water pump. There are many differences between the construction pump and a hydraulic ram water pump, including there is no drain in these cuttings. The geniuses who made these cuttings did not simply build a large, inefficient ram pump, and why should they? The ancient geniuses were much smarter than that. The ancient geniuses designed and built the construction pump as infrastructure to create prosperity for the builders and their civilization. These geniuses had a deep understanding of the world around them and an exceptional understanding of the physics of nature. This profound knowledge included the knowledge of water's property of implosion. In modern times, it was Victor Schraberger who understood implosion and built devices that utilize this fascinating feature of water. I contend that the advanced ancient builders also had a profound understanding of implosion and incorporated that understanding in the design of the subterranean water pump. If you are unfamiliar with Victor Schraberger and his life's work, I hope you will investigate the accomplishments of this fascinating man to discover what his research was all about. The ancient builders designed the subterranean cuttings and excavated these cuttings for the purpose of pumping water. We have examined the major components and introduced in a very basic way the function of these components. I contend that these oddly shaped excavations were not the result of the builders changing plans. These cuttings are oddly shaped if one thinks they were used as a tomb. But the reality is that the geniuses knew what they were doing and made these cuttings to serve a functional purpose. These cuttings were designed to be part of a functional infrastructure. This infrastructure was a working machine. This machine was a water pump unlike any other water pump built by mankind. In subsequent videos of this series, we will explore in detail the sophistication of this subterranean water pumping system. We will see how this water pump is powered and how all the components work together for the purpose of pumping water. 
we will examine how the cuttings seem to be designed for the purpose of utilizing implosion in the water pumping process. We will see how this water pump was first used, making it possible to build the massive structure we know of as the Great Pyramid. Thank you for watching the first few videos, and I hope you will watch the entire video series to discover how the subterranean cuttings, as well as how the Great Pyramid structure, were created to be an efficient but highly advanced water pumping system.